Hello, today's video is about forward parts. If you play micro stakes or low stakes, your goal when studying should be to study as effective as possible. And forward parts is not what you should prioritize. So in this video, I'll give you a rough idea of how forward parts are played. And at the end of this video, I'll tell you the best strategy for you to follow, which will guarantee to be decent and you can focus your time on studying the more important spots. Why am I saying studying forward pots isn't as important? Well, the first reason is that forward pots aren't all that frequent. I'm sure that you are aware that seeing the flop occurs much more often in single raised pots and three bit pots. And to be honest, this video is going to focus a little bit more on the four better because if you are playing micro stakes and your level isn't that high yet, you are even allowed to not call against four bets at all. You either fold or jam against the four bet. So you won't see all that many flops and you can focus on this video as this one will tell you what to do as the four better. A second reason why you shouldn't study too much four bet pots is that it is actually quite hard to study for two reasons. First, theoretically speaking, the ranges are quite small, quite tight, not many combos in the range. And then in practice, the real ranges are different than the theoretical ranges. So if you study with GTO Wizard, for example, the ranges your GTO opponent has will differ quite a bit from your real life opponent. And if you remove one or two combos or change one or two combos, the strategy can in some cases already be quite different. And secondly, the different start to pot ratio than you're usually used to on the flop. This means that bet sizings will be quite a bit different and it's quite hard to figure out when to bet 10%, 25% or when to even jam on the flop or on the turn. Many of you will be unfamiliar to having on the turn a stack that is less than a pot size bet and many instinctively maybe you just want to jam but you know in real life sometimes it is just a very small bet again, sometimes it is a jam. To figure it out take some time and some studying. So if I give you the shortcut at the end of this video of what to do, you will save yourself some time. And once you move up, once you get good at the single race pots and three bit pots, then you can study this. Before looking more into it, I will already anticipate the flop strategy. You can basically range C bet for the 25% size. This board I have randomly selected or semi-randomly and I'll just click 25% a couple of times with the different combos GTO Wizard gives me. So you get a little bit feeling of whether for this board this makes sense. And then after this, we will see the reasoning behind what I'm saying. So the Ace King here, you see, you know, sometimes other options are better. I'm not saying that this is the theoretically optimal strategy. This is the strategy I'm choosing for you who play micro stakes, who is less experienced and who hasn't studied it like we are going to do it now. Look, here we're seeing the forward situations for the button against the small blind. So the button opens, small blind three bets, you four bet on the button and the small blind calls. You see the overall check back frequency is 18.4% of the time, which means you see bet more than 80% of the time. In this specific spot, the most commonly used size in GTO is the 25% bet, but you also see that in position you use 10% sizings quite a lot. Four bet pots work a little bit different than single race pots. Usually when you are in position, you see bet smaller and out of position a little bit larger. And since the stack to pot ratio is low, we also see quite a bit of 10% bets going on. The key takeaway though, what I want you to remember is that in four bet pots, the C betting frequency is much higher than in single race pots. For example, in single race pots, you will never see a C betting frequency of over 80% in average like you see here in other four bit pots, spots may be out of position. It's less than 80%, but still much higher than in single race pots. So feel free to always 25% C bet in four bit pots. Let's have a look at the small blinds response in this spot specifically. So you can be aware that you can even go for a higher C betting frequency than in theory. Here you see the small blinds raise frequency after you small C bet on the button you see that over 20% of the time they should be raising, usually divided between a small re-raise size and an all-in. Your opponents on some boards, they will not be even close to the raising frequency and also the sizing because of the low stack to pot ratio, they will mix up quite a lot. So they will be jamming when they just should be small raising and vice versa. 
So now let's have a look at the button against the big blind seabed strategy. As I told you, the 25% seabed always range is across all the spots and forward pots I recommend for you. Let's try it out. Let's see for this board. I just randomly selected one from the reports, but given I filtered a couple of things, it is not that random. It's not like I rolled the dice for every single board, but let's have a look here. You see that usually 25% here is fine as well. And really, it just simplifies your life. Why worry about something that you shouldn't even be studying and, you know, make your life hard. Here again, the filters, you see that on average against the big blind, it is the same thing. The seabed frequency is over 80% of the time, 25%, the most common used. You can always do it. Have a look at the boards on the left to see which ones you should be checking back most. But again, this is just for you to get the theoretical knowledge because in real life, your opponent's four bed calling ranges are so different and therefore actually the boards where you should check back more if at all may actually be different. So let's one more time have a look at the out of position player's response and you will see that it's not going to be that different on the big plant against the button. The check raise frequency is considerably higher than what your opponents will do and on some boards specifically it is just completely different in real life. So C betting more is fine. It's not always that the four bit caller C bet, uh, sorry, re-raises that often especially when the forward caller is in position actually the raises go down significantly still you will be c betting out of position is your best strategy for now i'll explain why in a bit but just let's have a look at another spot for the forward for better being in position from tighter configurations so here we are under the gun we open the small blind three bed and we forward under the gum under the gum under the gun Let's have a guess. Do you think that the C betting frequency will be even higher than the button or will it be lower or will it be just about the same? Your strategy, as already mentioned, let's have a look whether it works here 25%. I again selected randomly a board from those showing up in the reports more to the top. Here you see that almost always the 25% size is the best sizing. Let's have one more, ace queen, and now let's have a look at the reports. Here you see the reports for this position. You see that the check back frequency is basically never 5% of the time in theory. And you see that the preferred sizing again is the 25% size. So the suggested strategy for me to always see that 25% in forward pots in tight configurations in position will be even more accurate. You, even in theory, should always be c-betting. Your range is so strong. So strong that the blind's response will actually also be quite different. They will still be re-raising a lot out of position, but they should re-raise for the small size. So whenever someone jams against you on the blinds against under the gun, you will likely be facing the wrong bet size. They should re-raise small. Now let's finally look at out of position C betting for the four better. Let's start with the cutoff against the button. So we open button three beds and we four bet. I already told you we are always taking the 25% strategy, but as I mentioned, the strategy is larger sizes on average out of position, but that will still be 25%, sometimes larger beds. But generally speaking, let's have a look at random boards again and we will try out the 25% size. And well, we, there will be a board you will see that sometimes it's not always going to be the best size. Here you already see that the frequencies is between that or the 50% seabed. So it's basically what I said before. You kind of mix the sizes, but not the 10% size as you saw before. Let's confirm it in the report. You see that in some situations there are 10% sizings. But more often than the 10% seabed size is the 50% seabed size and the most frequent still is the 25%. And you see that even out of position, we only check 22% of the time. So even out of position, high seabed frequency. Remember, we are looking at the cutoff against the button. Obviously, in other configurations, it will be a little bit different. This is why in this video I show different configurations, but the idea remains the same. Even out of position, a lot of c-betting, the size is on average a little bit higher, 
but the 25% generally speaking the most you size and given the hard question it is it, it's really hard to find out sometimes when 10% when 50% when jam on some flops you can jam given this takes too much time until you really master it and given it doesn't make as much sense because your micro stakes opponents slow stakes opponents they have completely different ranges just stick to the 25% seabed and I promise later in this video I will also talk about turn and river strategies obviously not as complex as the flop because that'd be too much to see but I'm just wanting you to really understand that why I suggest this strategy and why it's so commonly used many people use it it's not I'm revealing a secret but there's always someone who hasn't heard of it let's have a look at another out of position seabed spot now in tighter configuration under the gun against cutoff we open cut off three bets and we forward on the gun again a random fall a random flop and then let's have a look what happens if we always 25 percent see bet here ace king now the tens and you know i'm just doing this so you get a feeling and here again on this board you see that the 50 percent size will be used quite a bit and i want you to see whether it makes a difference whether we have a top pair like here or we have ace high does it change? Just get a feeling for it, you know? I'm not sure how often you've studied, but I want you to go away from this video and just have a little bit of a feeling how they are played without needing to study it that much. Let's confirm what happens in tighter configuration. Again, the same as you saw in position, less checking. So even though out of position, we are C betting over 90% of the time, in theory, when under the gun, cut off three bets and we four bet under the gun so our strategy here makes a lot of sense key takeaway just so you know how theory works more or less as said out of position is c betting a little bit larger on average and also the tight configurations c bet more than the wider configurations by the way for those of you who don't know by tighter configurations i just mean the positions where both players are quite tight so under the gun and cut off three bets of course, the ranges of both players are tighter than the example we are seeing here, which is a loose configuration, small blind against big blind. Have a look at the big blind 3-bet and the small blind 4-betting range. You should be 3-betting trash, and even your 4-bets on the small blind are really weak sometimes. Compared to other the gun and hijack and cutoff, when they face each other, it's basically the premium hands and a few more, but basically premium. This is what I mean by tight configuration and loose configuration where there's a lot of other hands going on as well. In tight configurations, you see that a lot because the four better has such a massive advantage. And well, in loser configurations, it depends a little bit more on the board. So here we will see a few boards that benefit the big blind more and you should be checking in theory. But as I say, your opponents, your ranges will likely be so different that it doesn't matter much. Just press one button, easy to follow strategy, press the 25% button. Be aware of what's happening in theory, but don't study the spot for now. Focus on three bit pots, focus on single race pots. Now let's test here the 25% the rule. Let's see what happens, ace king. And then on the reports, we'll worry about seeing the boards maybe you can find one or two exceptions there already which you will implement but here let's have a look medium pair you see the ace queen just ace high usually the 25 percent will work of course we have a board here that it works quite a bit with c betting much but as i keep saying just use the 25 percent on every sort of board here you can see lastly the pocket jacks what size do you think it is it is the 25 percent more often now let's finally look at the boards. Look to the left, you see that the top boards here, they have checking frequencies of over 70 or 80% of the time. Have a look at them, see that they are connected as well, 1098, 876, 987, etc. And then in real life, if you are ready to implement an exception, those are the boards, probably in real life it makes sense to not just close your eyes and see bits. But those really aren't that many board. As you can see, the check frequency here is 25% of the time. So a little bit more than in the tight configuration. But this doesn't mean it's a high check frequency. On Across the average, across all boards, it's 25%. So you will hardly make a mistake by C-betting only on very few boards. 
And now, as promised, let's have a look at the turn strategies. I promise now a little bit more simple. Just have a look here, random selected board again. We need to choose a board so we can look at the turn reports. For those of you who haven't seen it, here you can see after the board is king for three rainbow, for each single turn card, how often you should bet, how often you should check. On the right, you see the overall check frequency is 50% of the time. So the bad news for you on the turn is you cannot see bet as frequently as you could on the board. The bet size, you see that you have smaller sizes, you have larger sizes as well. This will greatly depend on the board, but the bet sizings on the turn will depend. But what you need to understand is that even though your all-in size is a perfectly normal bet size, we still, given we have two streets to play, are not either going all in or checking. So a lot of small sizings also on the turn going on, but you need more checking. I will already tell you the turn strategy I recommend for you is after C betting flop 25%, C bet the turn 25% again with range, no matter if value or bluff. Once you get more advanced, once you understand a little bit better of the bad cards, you start checking. Once you understand more about the sizings, you differ the sizings. But if you feel like you don't know what to do, press 25% again. You need to be aware that this is a little further from theory than your th flop strategy was. Still mass data analysis, so the analysis of how your population plays was done with it. And if you press 25% on the flop and then 25% on the turn range, your opponents don't react to it well. Generally speaking, be it for value or being with your weaker hands, this strategy is decent and will not lose you much EV and is definitely better than having no clue what to do and just pick a random size, which doesn't make sense. The 25% is the best sizings you can use if not sure what to do. So flop 25% and turn 25%. Basically range is going to be a decent strategy. But I do feel myself on the obligation of showing you theory. So you see that the checking frequency is 48% of the time out of position on 10.55 on under the gun against cutoff. So we are in the tight configuration again. And you see that the sizing used is acceptable, what I'm recommending you. But on this board specifically, the larger size is used much more often. But don't worry about it, your opponents react badly to it. So unless you've studied better, I always recommend you to stick to the 25% size, even on the turn for now. And now let's have a look at the in-position seabed strategy. Remember that we are always picking one board because we can't look at all boards, it's just too many boards on the turn. Now we're looking again from under the gun against the small blind, three betting, under the gun, four bet, small blind calls, board is two tone, queen, 10, eight. For this board strategy is 32% checking back the turn and the best sizing is somewhere between the 25% or also the larger size. So more sizings are used, things get more complicated on the turn. So be happy that this strategy is possible. And now to finish our turn lesson, let's have a look at the wider configuration and maybe one more after this, but here we are on the button against the big blind. The board is 9A2 rainbow and all the turn reports we're looking at is supposing a flop seabed of 25% that was called. Now it's checked to us and we see that on this board specifically, on average, we will check back the turn 36% of the time. And when we bet, the most frequent size is the 25% here. But you see that also some jamming is going on. So in doubt, if you press the 25% here, you would have been fine on most situations. Finally, to finish the turn lesson, we are on the button against the small blind and the board is Jack 6 2 rainbow again. Well, my random boards, they gave me too many rainbow boards. Anyway, here you can see the checkback frequency is similar and the sizing is either smaller or 25% for this board. So basically my goal for you, as there are so many turns and we can't possibly study turns enough in the 20 minutes video I want to do. So my goal for you is to understand that on the turn, checking frequency is higher than on the flop. And it depends greatly on the board on how much we check. On some boards, we really do need to be careful. The bed sizing will also depend obviously on our hand, but also the board. 
and you need to know this you need to know that in theory you don't press 25 percent again on the turn but i recommend you to do so when in doubt and given you aren't going to study four bit pots that soon or at least you shouldn't if you are still a micro stakes player then you will be in doubt more often than not and then you just press 25 percent again you see that in this video i'm basically talking about c betting so flop c bet turn c bet because our opponents raises they really won't have to do that much with theory so i recommend you when facing a race stick a little bit to your gut that's the best i can tell you especially if you've studied three bet pots before you'll understand a little bit more about low stack to pot ratios make sure to play your draws well your pairs well and you know sometimes it's just bad facing a race in the forward pot because you play for stacks but you need to get used to you will to be a pro or to be at least a profitable player need to get used to playing for stacks so when facing a race think about your hand and really if you believe it's a continue continue if you think you can fold then fold and now about the river our strategy so far has been flop 25, turn 25. What do you think the strategy is going to be on the river when in doubt? When in doubt, you can shove. Again, it will depend a little bit on your guts. So some rivers, they are really not nice to shove on. But if you really aren't sure, you think maybe here I can shove, shove. Usually, according to mass data analysis, when in doubt and the players go 25% flop, 25% turn and the river all in then this will be profitable don't be afraid to bluff the river if you don't really have a strong reason not to bluff you can do it this is what I also recommend to my students you know we are not going to study for bit pass right now we need to look at basic stuff so until we study it go 25% 25% and unless you have a strong reason not to bluff the river and obviously for value go all in I hope you enjoyed this video and learned more about 4 pots. Any questions about my coaching or this video, find my contacts in the YouTube description and see you in the next video.